turning down. We know that Bill will not be here and Charlie will not be here, but I didn't hear from anybody else. Hmm. So hopefully yeah. we get Carol and Dan. Did we figure out if we have enough to, uh, um, if we're going to prove the uh, frog pond? Yes, if we get, if we get either one of them, we we can, as long as we have a quorum, it doesn't matter which members, because you all only, the people who've missed meetings have only missed one each. So mm -hmm. that's okay. If no one had missed two, um, in which case we would have had to eliminate them from. Okay. Yeah. Well, it stopped raining and the sun's coming out. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. I guess I haven't got past me yet. Yeah, me either. You never know what you're going to get when you look out the window these days. Seems pretty consistent, extreme heat or rain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, well that that is a consistency, yes. Yeah. We're both at the same time. Yeah. We really hope we get one of our other commissioners. Yeah. Well, I did not. I checked my email a bunch of times today. I didn't hear back from anyone else. No. And there we go. There's Carol. Okay. Okay. Yay, Carol, you're number four. I can't hear you. I said I'd rather be number one. Well, you are number one number in one, my yeah. book because you're number four. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, so this is the marathon meeting of uh, July. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it on. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. Um, well, since we have everybody in six forty-five, uh, let's bring this meeting to order. This is the uh, New Report Conservation Commission meeting, uh, July 18th, 2023. This meeting's being recorded. Um, first item are the meeting minutes from June 20th, 2023. Anybody have any uh, comments or changes or anything with that? Look good. Get a motion. motion to approve. Second. Uh, roll call. Dan, you're just in time. Um, we're voting on the uh, meeting minutes. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. I I didn't have anything to add to that, but um, was it, yeah. I I'm a yes. <laughs> Yes, me too. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next one is uh, Plum Island updates. Do you have any updates, Julie? Update on Plum Island is that there is a MRBA meeting scheduled for August 4th, Friday, August 4th at 10 a.m. at PETA Hall. Um, six new Moby mats were purchased through two different CPA grants and they've been delivered to Department of Public Services. Three have already been moved out to 
53rd Street and rolled out by DPS, which is great. So now they're moving mats on 53rd and 57th, and then we've got the ramp at 55th. So those are all great accesses. And then three more moving mats were, are being delivered to the parking lot for use by DCR and supplementing what they've got out there to try and fix the pathway from the parking lot out to the beach. Um, but aside from that, there's no, no new developments out there on Plum Island that I know of. <clears throat> there was a, um, another MRBA meeting oh, since last time. I couldn't go. Was there anything uh, of significance? Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember that meeting. It was, yeah, that was a good meeting. Um, a lot talk about a lot of talk about Salisbury and um, moving forward with trying to get Army Corps, you know, going on their study to figure out how to repair the jetty. Um, and DCR talking with DCR about the Moby maps and stuff like that. So Oh, when one new development is that we don't have Daryl Forgione anymore. I don't know if you all remember Daryl. I know you probably do, Dan, um, David. But Daryl, who had been brought back to work with the city on our Plum Island, you know, DCR issues, um, got moved to a new job, and now there's we don't really have anyone anymore. So we're we're sort of struggling to find a new good contact person to help us get things done out on the dunes. Um, but we are working on that. It's too bad. Yeah. It's a good move for him. It's a great new position for him, but just it's sad that we got him back and then lost him so quick. Hmm. All right. Um, in that case, let's go on to uh, certificates of compliance, et cetera. Uh, first item is uh, Lisa Gallagher, 75 Parker Street. Request for extension. Yeah. So 75 Parker Street. I don't know. Is Lisa Gallagher here? Let me just check and see. Um, she's not, not seeing her. So um, this project was permitted back in 2018. And um, it the, the order conditions was extended under the permit extension due to the COVID emergency under that sort of tolling period that they allowed for permits, but it still would have expired in 2022. And um, knowing that this was happening, Port City Realty requested an extension to the planning office and they referenced their planning board permit, special permit back in 2021, when both the CONCOM permit and their planning board permits were expiring and they got their extension from the planning board, they not sort of knowing, they didn't have their lawyers involved, I guess, they not sort of knowing what, what was happening, they assumed that that meant that all of their city permits were extended. And um, they only just now realized that their CONCOM permit was not also extended at the same time. So they um, are asking us to grant them like a kind of a retroactive extension so that they don't have to start from scratch and refile a whole new notice of intent. Nothing has changed on the project. The plans are all staying the same um, and they just want to get started like this summer. So- um, Julia, is this I, the pre property that was going to be uh, turned into something different by the brewery? No, that's 79 Parker Street. Oh, okay. It's a good question because they're like really close to each other. That this is 75. This is an existing building. Here's the here's the parcel. So 79 is further up Parker Street on the corner, you know, with those White House and that whole building. This is just a, an existing one-story concrete block building that they wanted to put an addition on um, and add parking and stormwater management. Um, so it's a much smaller project and they um here's the proposed um this is the exact say this is the existing and here's the proposed so there's going to be a building addition in the back and again nothing has changed this is still exactly what they want to do they just because of various reasons and including covid and all of that 
weren't able to start and um, are hoping to start now. So rather than make them refile all of this, we have the order of conditions. Um, they're asking if we can sort of retroactively extend it to you know, when they did the planning board. So it would be, they, they're only asking for a two-year extension. I would recommend that we give them a full three-year extension just because, you know. So was this Bob Germanara's land? I think this was the Germanara, but it's not, I think it was his property. Yeah. I remember correctly, okay. but I don't think he's okay. involved in this. So it's a car, car repair place yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so if we're doing a retroactive, should we go back to when it was, uh, to, should the three years start back when the other one expired? So I actually have, I actually calculated when it would have expired given the tolling period, the COVID period, which would have been November 28th, 2022. So that's when, um, that's when we can sort of date the extension, but then it would, the ex it would still be extended. Well, it would be extended three years from then. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, yeah. that's fine by me. Yeah. We need a motion to do the extension. Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. I vote yes. All right. Uh, next item is Jordy Vining, City of Newburyport, Clipper City Rail Trail Phase Two, request for a certificate of compliance. Okay. Okay. Here's here we go. And now let's see who we have. I think we have Dave Smith here to represent this. Yeah. Okay. So hold on, David. I'm going to promote you to a panelist. Um. And if there's anybody else here for that particular project, I will move them over too, but I think we just have David Smith. Um, and David, I have your request for certificate of compliance and the plans, et cetera. Um, if you wanna walk us through, you know. Sure. Thank you. Um, David Smith uh, from GZA 144 Elm Street in Amesbury here representing the city of Newburyport uh, for the Shoreline Resiliency Critical Infrastructure Protection and Clipper City Rail Trail Project. Um, this project um, was completed back in May uh, 26 of 2021. Uh, the reason for the delay in the certificate of compliance request um, was because there was a special condition uh, in the order of conditions for uh, two years of annual monitoring on the plantings. Um, in 2022, um, in May, uh, the site was inspected and several of the plants had uh, did not make it uh, throughout the season, so they were replaced. And then a site visit occurred back in May um, 25th of this past year. Uh, Jordy Vining uh, was there along with the uh, representative GZA and walked the site. And basically it was determined that, you know, greater than 75% of the, of the uh, plantings, uh, you know, are survived and doing well. Um, with that, um, we were able to file the certificate of compliance uh, during construction. There were three minor changes that we noted in the cover letter. Uh, one of which is the wall reconstruction near the eastern end. Um, 16 feet of it was actually changed from a wall to a stone revetment. Uh, that was because during construction, the it was discovered that the uh, buried electrical, uh, I believe it's a 13 kV line, um, was really close <laughs> to the excavation. Um, so in order to avoid uh, disrupting that utility, uh, that change was made in the field. Um, so that was one change. There was a little bit of landside grading right off the top of the path that was done uh, to incorporate, um, it was kind of a flatter area that was graded to incorporate um, the shipwreck structure um, and then a hammock seating that was kind of done um, during construction. Uh, so that was the second minor change. And then the third one 
was uh, the stormwater basin located on the land side of the walkway um, that was adjusted by having some crushed stone fabric put in um, and then also on the land side slope uh, that was also um, stabilized with fabric and um, and crushed stone. Uh, I think that's what you see right in that photograph, photo 10. So with that, uh, the city's looking to close out this project. Okay, anybody got any questions? So does this, in, this doesn't include the extension over off of um, Parker Street? Is that considered a separate project? That's correct. That's This is not included in that work. Okay, I'll make a motion to issue the certificate certificate of compliance. Second. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. Uh, David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next item. <laughs> Uh, Robert Wolick, Wolsick, uh, Strum Chemical, Mulligan Way Request Certificate of Compliance. Okay. Um, this one, here we go. Uh, let's see. We've got, yeah, Matt Steinel is here. Matt, I'm going to move you to be a panelist. Matt can explain this project to you guys, which I think was done quite successfully. Good evening. Matt. Good evening. Hello. So uh, for the record, Matt Steinel from Millennium Engineering um, here tonight representing the applicant Strum Chemicals uh, in their request for the certificate of compliance. The commission may recall that we were uh, back before you a couple of years ago uh, with an application to install a new transformer pad and transformer on the paved surface next to the building. And then a conduit was gonna be excavated and, and connecting an existing utility pole um, on the property to that new transformer. Recently, we were contacted by STREM to come out and do the as-built as they had indicated the work had been completed. And uh, when we did the as-built, we found a couple minor deviations from the plan um, but when I spoke with the engineer in the office, Brian, he had said that he had been aware of these changes as they were happening, had communicated some of this information to the commission through their agent. And before you tonight is the ASBELT plan. And so the deviations that I'll point out, I don't know if you can see my cursor or if it's Julia's screen you that you're seeing. Want to show me where to zoom in? I can just uh, to that right hand side of the building there. Yep. Perfect. So kind of to the lower part of the screen there, you can see the square where the uh, transformer is. Originally, that was about 15 feet, you know, towards the uh, north of where it is. Um, in the photo package that we submitted, um, I think what happened was uh, there wasn't uh, enough thought put into the placement of that proposed uh, ease, that proposed pad, rather. And in the photo on one of the pictures, you can see there's actually a door there. So I think they just had to shift it in order to not block the door. And so that pad got shifted, you know, kind of to the bottom of the screen there, about 15 feet away from that corner of that building. Uh, in addition to that, when the utility company came out to actually make the connection, they determined that it was necessary not to come off of the existing utility pole there. And so there is another transformer uh, just a little bit further up. Right here. Right there. Yep. There's a transformer there. And just behind that, they installed a new utility pole where the conduit was originally gonna come off the pole a little bit north of that and cut in front of that transformer. Now it's overhead to the new utility pole and then comes behind that transformer through the paved section. So uh, the, the two major deviations is the 15 foot shift in the pad and the installation of a new utility pole that was needed to satisfy the utility company's requirements. Um, beyond that, it, the, the impacts are relatively the same. It's a trench through the paved area when they were done, they repaved it. You can see in that bottom photo there. And you can, in that top photo, it's a little hard to see, but if you look just to the right of the green transformer, you can see the open door there. So that's where it would have originally been blocking if they had moved it up close to the corner. Beyond that, I'm happy to answer any questions, but it appears to be done in, in reasonable close conformance with the plan. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Anybody? Motion to issue the certificate of compliance. Second. All right, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next item, David Smith, GZA Environmental, Environmental Link, Zero North Reservation Terrace, Plum Island Beach, request for certificate of compliance. Yes, okay, so here we go. David's already still over here. Is there anybody else we need? I don't think so. Okay, so David, I've got the request, I've got the photos and your whole application, your whole request here, you can just let me know how you want to quickly run through this. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks, Julia. Uh, David Smith from GZA 144 Elm Street in Amesbury, here representing the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR, for the non federal sponsor or non federal uh, project permitting of dredge spoils beneficial use. So, this is the uh, dredging project at North Point Plum Island. Um, the project uh, was completed uh, on or around April 7th of 2023. And uh, with that, um, an as built uh, was required as part of the order conditions. So um, we went out there and performed an as built survey shortly after the completion of the project. And that's submitted as part of this um, request for certificate of compliance. In addition, in the cover letter, there was uh, notes of some um, uh, following deviations, one of which, um, and I think most folks will probably know this um, from being involved in this project uh, from many years, uh, is that there was, um, originally it was 290,000 uh, cubic yards of sediment that was gonna be dredged and placed at um, North Point. Uh, and from the Army Corps of Engineers, their volumes uh, total 214,625 yards. So it was a reduction of about uh, 75, a little over 75,000 cubic yards. Um, so that's the first uh, change uh, that occurred. The second change is that the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, if you recall, this is an Army Corps dredging project, and their project was to dispose of the dredge spoils behind the South Jetty Spur, and DCR was the um, non-federal uh, proponent to uh, take the rest of the material, the dredge material, and place it further uh, beyond the Corps' uh, project limits, and basically what you see in the drawing uh, in front of you. Um, the Corps, during the course of the project, uh, increased the elevation of this nourished area, it was originally proposed to be at elevation 6.5 NAVD 88 datum. They raised it two feet. Um, so with that, uh, there was a reduction in overall square footage uh, of the nourished area. And that was reflected um, also because of the volume, uh, the redu reduction in the volume. Uh, the third change, um, and this occurred during construction, there was two contractors uh, on this project, the original contractor, h and uh, contracting, and then uh, they subbed out the bulk of the dredge, uh, dredging and disposal work to Norfolk Dredging. Uh, they accessed the site um, through the uh, parking lot at North Point uh, by captain's fishing parties and came and accessed their equipment along the beach, uh, as opposed to the originally proposed uh, way of access, which was going to be along the pathways. Um, so that re reduced um you know certainly the amount of impacts to the pathways and the and the dune area um and this was this was uh brought up in a meeting during construction um attended um uh, by julia and um and then we're just basically capturing this as the certificate of compliance uh the army corps of engineers i believe also provided the pre and post um uh, construction plans and photographs, the same photographs we've included with our application. I believe they also um, included that um, 
in the submission to the uh, to the city's conservation commission as well. So with that, we're just requesting to close out this uh, order of conditions. Do you have any idea how much of what they put there has disappeared already? I mean, unfortunately, I don't. Um, we only did the as-built survey um, shortly after they completed the work. Yeah. Um, we only have that um, that that survey data. Uh, we have not um, surveyed it afterwards. Is there any downside um, to the certificate of completion in that? Um, if any other work has to be done here, would it be through the previous um, order of conditions for the uh, bags and stone project, or uh, is that one still open? I'm just thinking if if uh, if is there any reason not to complete this or the other one? Yeah, I'm not sure, Dave, about the old one, um, if that order is still open or not. I, I would imagine it probably has since expired. Um, it, any any future work is going to have to have a new filing. Yeah. yeah. But, David, that we I believe there is a condition, a special condition in this particular order of conditions. And I wish I, or I don't have it in front of me. I thought I had it up here. But um, that does allow them to... Um, Sand, you know, plant and fencing up and do those types of things within this area. I don't, I don't believe we put anything in. It, it allows renourishment, but um, yeah, I, 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 I guess um, if anything happens, it's probably just as well to start uh, start fresh anyway. I mean, it's such a large area that would have to be impacted. And there are efforts underway to, to measure any loss of sand out there. So I just got an email from the mayor. He's plus sort of soliciting any data from, from folks who may have photographs um, that we can use to document any loss of sand out there since it was placed. And also, as you can see in these aerial photos that I have up on the screen, this is from UNH, and they've already established some transects that you can see here. That they are going to, they, they are measuring and um, changes in the nourishment area. So we should be able to have a good documentation of what's happening out there. I just don't have like results of that at this point. I do have some photos though. You can see this is the planting that's done that was done by UNH and coordination with some school groups. This is taken from the end of 75th Street, where this, are the, this was sort of the old rock wall. And um, I'm standing at the end of and the pavement at the end of 75th Street. And you can see there's actually like a, there's a person sitting in a beach chair up here. There's a real elevation change. Um, there's like almost a, a, like a hill that's formed. Um, let's see if I can get another picture. Sorry that these are so like off center. Here's again, the, the plantings have been coming in. They're nice and green and healthy. And here's just another shot of that. Um, but it, it is pretty flat and this high tide does come up pretty high. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to just keep our fingers crossed. And I'll make a motion to issue the certificate of compliance. Second. All right. Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Can I hear a second? Second. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. The uh, first item is Kim Turner, City New Report, 149 High Street, Notice of Intent. All right. Let me move 
here, I'm going to move the team um, for this project over to be panelists. And Ashley. All right. So now let me bring up. Julie, if you could let Krista share screen for this. Yeah, I'll just do that. Sorry. I'm like That's fine. trying to identify all your files up here. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to stop share. And um, oops. and now, Krista, you could share your screen. That'd be great. Great. Um, thanks, everyone, for your time again tonight. Um, there were just a few outstanding items that were requested by the uh, commission at our last meeting. Um, one was a final grading plan of the project, which is up on the screen right now. Um, this is a fairly minor uh, grading exercise, um, a little bit of earth movement, um, primarily upland, um, where we're showing um, positive drainage away from the pond into uh, swales along the hillside that will collect um, uh, and then a minor amount of grading inside the pond, which is mostly just uh, the imported material that's going to be brought in. Um, sorry, can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then the creation underneath the dock of the, where the intake pipe is coming in. Um, so I, I will... I'll hold that piece for now if you have questions. Um, the second item that was requested by the commission is the revised planting plan. And this more or less just directly responds to the grading. Last time you saw sort of colored bands um, of species that were indicated by the elevations above the water level. Um, this is a little bit greater detail, still utilizing all the same planting species that were proposed the last time we were here, but this gives a little bit more detail as to exactly where they're going to be placed. Um, and the final item that was requested uh, was additional dock um, details. So we've provided that information in the packet. Um, we also have a video that shows how the dock is moved in and out of the pond. If, if there's any desire to, to see how, how that's going to work, we can pull that up as well. Um, but in trying not to take too much of the commission's time, I think I will leave it at that for now. And we're um, open to any additional questions or any other detail that you guys might, might request. Thanks. I'm still curious how the, the dock and the, the axle for the wheels is going to clear the, the intake pipe. Sure. Krista, do you have that detail that shows the crossing of the bracing? The mic on reminds me what sheet that's on. Mike, that's our first detail sheet. There you go. So what we did was, and again, this was something that when we presented it earlier, it was more 20% construction document level. And now we're a lot closer to 100% now because the intent is to try to go to bid as quickly as we can at this point. Um, but the intent is based on where we are at right now is that we've actually sunken in um, the intake screen and pipe so that it falls below the axle. And then it, so basically what will happen is that there's a ramp that's, that straddles the intake uh, screen itself. That's the, and the ramp is above the intake screen itself. So if you could actually zoom out a little bit. Yep, and then scroll over further to the right. Yep. So there's a ramp that actually exists and you can, can actually see if you zoom in on that a little bit further, please, thank you. So what we've done actually is that we've graded the pond and we've graded it such that the wheels are on, are on a, not on a track, but they're on a, a, an ample ramp of stone on either side and that the 
intake pipe is set backwards or set back inside this ramp so that as we pull the dock out and push it back into the into the uh, pond that the wheels will go and straddle the um the intake pipe but also stay above the uh the intake so that as it's extra extracted and then pushed back in the wheels stay on the stone ramp that's higher than the intake um notch or the niche that we've created in the grading plan um and the, and and so that axle doesn't hit the top of the pipe or it doesn't hit the um uh the the intake screen itself if you go a couple sheets back actually right here perfect you can see here that basically what this is is it's it's an it's a graded niche where the intake pipe is set back into the slope closer to where um the edge is but then we have a ramp that is stone lined it's the same stone that it's the same stone that we're proposing to ballast the the liner on um, but that stone will actually act as a ramp to be able to pull in and pull out on um, the uh the dock itself the uh the foldable dock itself so um after reviewing this um we, we took it to heart we looked at it really intently we came up with a pretty good solution i believe where we can protect and we can protect the intake pipe and the intake screen with this sheath of stone and then the outer edge which is higher than the intake pipe and the screen itself will easily slide in and out of the uh uh, upon straddling and going over the intake pipe without the axle actually hitting the uh, the intake screen or pipe itself. Okay. And um, what, what would be the mechanism that I, I saw on your last, uh, well, one of your earlier slides, uh, it, it said something about 1,400 pounds or so. Is there going to be like a come along that goes with this? Uh, what what? I, th I think it's time to put the cue the video. So I think that would be the. Uh, uh, I'd like to see the video. Is it okay if I uh, play a YouTube video for all you folks? Somebody give me a wave if the audio is not working. So it's easily pushed in. There's two people doing that. Um, it's hinged, it's on rolling wheels so that it, they're rugged and they can slide in. And they, those wheels would slide on the, the stone ramp that we're proposing on either side of the intake pipe itself. And then once the dock is in, then it gets locked in place. Needed the audio. I figured our discussion would be more important than their advertisement. Okay. Um, one one thing, one question I have is uh, the stone ramps. Are they gonna? Won't they start uh, settling and or falling over with multiple uh, runs of this uh, dock back in and out? Well, there would only be two runs in and out per year. Um, so it's not a repeated, um, it, it's not a repeated to the point where there would be significant fatigue, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so we only see it being done twice a year, once to pull it in, once to pull it out. Um, that, that section in particular would be reinforced with additional stone so that it's not necessarily just that, um, an immediate layer or a thin layer of stone that's it's 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 graded and it's and it's filled in in a way in that location to be able to um uh to withstand um the force or the rolling um of that dock um on that ramp so and it's an and it's that a wide system. enough it's a wide it's sorry it's a wide enough track so that it's not like the wheels are on it, they have enough stone that to exactly cover the wheels themselves or it's not like it's on a track there's mm -hmm. enough given, there's enough um, play, um, horizontally speaking, to put this, uh, to, to wheel this uh, ramp in. So I don't expect that to be, uh, to rut out. I don't expect it to um, slough off, um, especially only using, because of its weight and because how it's how the weight's distributed and the wheels themselves are wide um, and can distribute the weight properly. So I, I don't see that as an issue here. 
Okay. Do you think that now that the intake is below the, the level of the, the bottom, you know, it's submerged sort of, that <clears throat> the debris will accumulate that will need to be removed? So it's actually not at the bottom itself. So the way that, so, and again, it, it's, so it's the, the, the intake itself is not at the bottom. So the intake is actually still at the bottom of the, the, the bottom of the pond itself is still six inches below that. So the, the cross section that we saw on the other one, that's the cross section through the screen itself. So there actually still is six inches of freeboard or space between the bottom of the intake screen and the actual pond bottom itself. Um, we added additional stone underneath the intake screen itself to help um, from as a support perspective so that it didn't have that cantilever detail that we had before. And I know that was one of the comments that we um, needed to address originally too. So we have a, a, a concrete um, seepage collar within the slope itself. The intake screen itself is, 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 is supported by an additional six inch layer, thick layer of armor stone, uh, but then it's still set above so that it's not taking muck in. Um, and it wouldn't take muck in in this area anyway, only because it's, it's more stu it's stone as opposed to the benthic sand layer that we're proposing throughout the rest of the, um, the pond itself. I, I guess so. I was thinking of vegetative debris that, you know, with all these plants, there's going to be leaves and things that could get sucked up against the screen. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see that as an issue because it's the, so the, the pipe itself is designed to, to have a velocity of less than one foot per second. So um, the intent really is to have, so that it's, the screen really is only there to, um, it, it's not it's not like a suction screen per se. It, it's really just a means of um, blocking out any type of debris that could get in the wet well itself. Um, so water isn't necessarily sucking through there, um, or at least not in the in the context that you may be thinking of. It's it, the water will be fed from the pond into the wet well by gravity. The screen itself really is only there to protect from uh, from turtles or any other type of larger debris from getting in there. The pumps themselves, if there is some if there is some amount of debris, there is some amount of um, solids that the pump can handle, um, but then those would get filtered out and back flushed um, into the dry well. Okay. There's no problem with the geometry of this as far as uh, where you're going to bring the vehicle to pull it out and, and pulling it out. Uh, there's, there's ample flat area. And uh, a second question was about where it was going to be stored. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have an answer as far as where it's going to be stored. Um, that would be... Um, it would be stored at DPS. Right. So it would be it would be part right. It would be it would be by the city if it's DPS, Kim, then that's where it is. Um so from, from a geometry standpoint, it would be the, the the dock system itself folds up so that as the dock can be extracted and pulled up, that the, the sections can be folded up um to be able to be stored it's as it's being extracted. Well, Mike, right? I'm sorry. It can be disconnected and connected again. The segments, right? Yeah, they're all they're also segmented as well. So if it's a matter of trying to pull it out in one fell swoop, it can be done that way with with um, with, with hinged uh, with with a hinge, or it can be separated as well. And the city is all set on the program for the dock and uh, how uh, we're going to get to utilize it and so forth. Yes, you have a letter from DPS in the packet from Wayne Amaral from the last time around. Okay. I have a related question to Steve's about the um, intake and, the, and this, the, the niche that's been sort of like created for the dock to go down. Just in terms of like, I'm just imagining it's, it's not gonna be sucking a lot of debris up against it and all that, but if in like say in the fall when a lot of leaves are falling and a lot of stuff is landing in the pond, um, if for some reason, and because this is sort of a narrow little niche right there, if for some reason things do start to accumulate within there and block the flow of water um, through the intake, is there some sort of mechanism where we would know that that's happening? Would there would an alarm go off if all of a sudden there's no you know there's a restriction in flow through the intake pipe? 
Absolutely. That That's a great, great question. So the way that the way that it would be alerted to the city through it, the online platform is that if there were an obstruction in the intake screen itself, so let's say that there's um, debris or leaves or something that ends up taking um, the intake screen itself, what would happen is that the wet well inside would, would start to drop in water level because the water flow going in from the pond couldn't keep up with demand from inside pumping the wet well itself. So what would happen would be there'd be a liquid level sensor that's inside the wet well itself. If that fell below a pre prescribed level, that would trigger an alarm to stop pumping. And then whoever's managing the system would receive the alert and say, oh, there's an issue with um, the intake screen itself. So, um, and there are methods where to be able to clean that out, whether it's um, surging it back out, surging uh, water back out, or in, and again, what you, the scenario that you're talking about, which would be the fall, I really don't see this pump system working into foliage season, frankly. I think that we get to September in that area, and then the system begins to kind of wind down to the point where you may, you probably may or may not need to run this. So really the system that we're proposing here is more of a spring to early fall type of operation. Um, once you get to foliage, once, once the leaves start to fall, I foresee this system being almost getting prepared to be wrapped up um, at that point, because we want to be well ahead of winterization so that we can pull the, the dock out. As we pull the dock out, there can be some inspection that's done for the screen, the intake pipe, that type of thing, before everything's buttoned up in the winter. It's a good question, but there, there would be mechanisms to be able to identify when, if and when there would be um, an intake screen uh, clogging issue. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? Not hearing anything. Uh, would anybody from the public like to uh, speak? Raise your digital hand if so. I'm not seeing any digital hands. So um, what do we want to do? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. There is a variance um, request that goes oh. along with this that you all would have to vote on um, before actually closing. Oh, correct. And I do have a copy. I drafted, a, I drafted the variance. So I have a copy of it if you want to give it a quick look. And then vote on it. I can share yes. my screen again. Here. Here we go. So this would be the variance. Um, Resource areas affected, land under water bodies, bank buffer zone, bank and land under water. Um, so the variance requested under 6.5-30 for the following activities, disturbance of construction within the 25 foot no disturbed buffer zone, um, disturbance of greater than 20% of the total area of buffer zone on site, direct impacts to bank and direct impacts to land under water or which is the pond in section 8A4 of our regulations. Um, and then the findings in support of variance are that there are no reasonable conditions or alternatives. Oops, I spelled that wrong, I'll fix that. That would allow the project to proceed in compliance with these regulations. And they've shown us, we went through in, in the early hearings, a lot all of their alternatives, their alternatives analysis. Uh, two mitigating measures or proposal allow the project to be conditioned, another typo, so as to contribute to the protection of wetland values protected by the ordinance. And as we know, this is a restoration project, so it's entirely mitigation, essentially. The whole project is a is an aim to improve um, the conditions of the resource areas. And then the project is necessary to accommodate an overriding public interest. Um, and again, as described, I say as described above, this historic public landscape will be significantly cleaner, healthier, and more available for enjoyment by the general public as a result of this project. So that would be that would be the variance. 
we have any questions on that? So do you need us to make a motion to accept the variance as written? Well, as it yeah, will be with, with, <laughs> as it's with my edited. corrections. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Back to the closing of the public hearings. Uh, we did get a, we got a second on all that, right? I think we did. I think you got a second. I, I seconded. You seconded, okay. All right, so a roll call. Uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, thank you. Thanks very much. Nice. We'll, we'll discuss the uh, notice of intent, or not notice of intent, the order of conditions uh, after the uh, this next uh, hearing. All right, uh, on to the next hearing. Uh, New report manager, LLC, Zero Browns, Browns Wharf, notice of intent. Okay, so we have Paul Avery, Chris Giba, and Paul Avery here. Um, to represent this project. I'm gonna promote them to panelists and um, and they can walk us through this proposed project. This Julie, can you uh, demote Kim and Krista um, and uh, other folks? Yeah. Um, Kim and Krista and everybody, we will be doing the order conditions after this. Okay. Um, Paul, I'm assuming you're speaking. Go ahead. Sure. Um, can I share screen? I've kind of got a deck here. That yeah, absolutely. Going to be more presentation friendly. Perfect. Okay. Oops. Okay. Do you do you have my screen here with a plan of the go? Yes. Okay. It's behaving a little bit differently here. So. Okay. Um. So this is the the overall plan. Um. This is the Hilton's Marine Building here. Uh. Not shown on the plan. Slightly to the right slash east is Tuscan Grill. Um. New report lighting is down here in the lower right, and then here's the travel lift for uh, Windward Yacht Yard. Uh, the marine bulkhead runs existing through, well, comes down through the top, it comes across the front of the building and then continues over along. <clears throat> there are marina float ramps that go out at two locations um, on either side of the building. Um, the blue line that runs through this is uh, with all of this, everything on the plan is land subject to coastal storm flowage um, associated with the, with the Merrimack River here. The blue zone is just the demarcation between the velocity zone and the regular uh, AE zone. Um, so that's, you know, a differentiation there, but, but the, the boarding of the, excuse me, the land subject to coastal storm flowage uh, flows throughout. Um, the building here has been here historically for a while, um, primarily operating as Hilton's, um, and it's been there since at least 1960s. I'm not sure exactly the date was, but um, we actually, I don't have it here, but documentation that um, a restaurant use has been present in this building since um, that time that we had it found a newspaper clipping sometime in the 60s that advertised that. More recently, there's been the marine marina operations in here and Plum Island Coffee Roasters was on the western portion of the building um, with outdoor seating uh, beyond heading over towards windward. Uh, what we're proposing is, as I'm sure you all know, there are ongoing renovations uh, for the interior of the building. Uh, we're here because there's some associated 
uh, exterior improvements we'd like to make as part of that project. And uh, there are really uh, five pieces of that. And if I just kind of walk through each one, um, hopefully get some clarity on what this overall program is. So the first one is basically repairing and reconfiguring the deck here. Um, this deck, and I've got a couple pictures of it, has fallen into some, some disrepair. Um, the entrance to the GOAT will be about here. As you can see, there's no accessible accommodations. Um, and it is noted a moment ago, it is in disrepair and it, it needs to be repaired and improved. So, so basically jumping back to the plan, and I'll zoom in a little bit. We're going to remove the steps that were just in the photograph we had before, <clears throat> construct some new steps that would be in front of where the entrance will be for um, the go, <clears throat> and then also provide a, uh, a ramp for accessibility, uh, which is just required for ADA compliance. So that is piece one. Piece two is down here at the bottom of the page. This one is... Um, putting in a uh, a cooler, a walk-in cooler. Uh, the way we've got this set up because it's in the in the uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage, we're proposing to put it on a trailer um, and it would in essence be portable. And if there is a need to remove it, uh, we could could just remove it, you know, and there's a fence that goes around it. The fence is also uh, removal. We didn't provide a detail on it, but it would be one of the ones where the posts are set in some um, just portable structures that could be picked up and moved. The purpose of the, of the fence is screening uh, because where this is located here, and I'll zoom out a little bit, <clears throat> this is looking east. This is the uh, Newburyport Harbor Walk that was, you know, put in um, in coordination with the DEP to provide public access through this area. Um, it was worked through a few years ago. This is the walk. It's got some planters and that type of thing. So that where the cooler would go would be in this area here, you know, uh, and therefore we're looking to provide the screening to, to basically separate the back of the house of, of the uh, goat operations from um, the public walkway. So that is piece two. Excuse me, piece can I ask you? three, zooming back in, is improving the outdoor seating area. This outdoor seating area is the same area uh, that was- Hang, hang on a second. Um, okay. Carol, you had a question? Yeah, just before I, I lose the thought, you said there'd be screening in front of the walk-in freezer. What kind of screening are you talking about? Are you talking about planes uh, or- We're looking at a solid fence. A solid fence, oh, yep. okay. Chris, did you have any more, if you're here, um, do you get promoted up any more detail on what the intent is on that? That's okay. I, I just wondered okay. when you said it would be screened off. I was envisioning trees. <laughs> yeah, so it's our, we're showing, the plan we're calling for constructing a removal, removal eight foot high horizontal slat screening fence. Let's see, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Move on. Um, is on there one? any so, setback or anything else that's associated with the Harbor Walk as far as, because it looks pretty close to it, um, property wise? Um, well, the Harbor, the Harbor Walk is existing. Right. But what I'm saying is sometimes there's a, um, additional, uh, um, that backs for fences. Yeah, um, I just want to make sure that that is all on your property and not city. Um, I think, Julia, didn't you have the, I think yeah. the property continues out further. You had the tax map up at the beginning of this. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually think that the walkway actually is on their property, not. I'm not quite sure it is. It's sort of just a, a public yeah. right way through there. Um, because of chapter 91 and those issues and um, but so also only, this is being looked at by zoning okay so the only easement is the trail itself okay right right okay all right uh sorry back to piece three um would be the 
outdoor seating area here again. This is an enhancement of what's been there uh, for most recently uh, Plum Island Coffee Roasters. Uh, the same general shape and size. Uh, the improvements here that are proposed is we want to bring the grade up to generally be consistent with the floor level of the building uh, and, and therefore will be built up slightly. And then we're providing a ramp here, which is necessary for accessibility purposes and and the fence around it. Uh, we are looking to finish this area with pavers that go in conjunction with part number five that I'll get to shortly. But basically, this is it, is improve uh, the seating area that was formerly occupied by Plum Island Coffee Roasters. OK. Uh, the next one, and this is where it gets a little more technical and I got a bunch of pictures is we are looking to repair and raise bulkhead uh, to match the adjacent sections. Um, and with this is piece number five, which is also uh, raising the the grade in there and extending the pavers through to have an area for outdoor gathering. This would not be seating for the restaurant. It's just an outdoor gathering area that would be accessible you know, people can walk through it. They, if the restaurant was closed, or even the restaurant was, you get it, you'd come up through the walk here and, you know, be able to walk around this. Um, so it would be a, an area that's open to the public. Um, to wrap your head around this, I've got some details, but they're a little hard to read. I think this is probably the easiest way to see what we're talking about. That is, you're, as you're coming from Windward and the travel lift that we have at uh, top of the bulkhead, and then it drops down by a foot or more to a lower elevation running across the building. This picture is a little bit old, but you can see that the floor elevation of the building, it's lower than the top of the higher section of the bulkhead, but higher than the top of the lower section of the bulkhead which basically everything in there is shown in the next thing, and this is looking the same direction, is a bit of a mess of, it's, it's basically not safe to walk through here because there's broken bits of concrete, there's remnants of former variations of, of, the, of the bulkhead and other artifacts from the history of what's going on here. So the intent would be is we're gonna raise the top of this by, this is like, steel piles with timber lagging in between, extend the, 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 uh, the timber piles and then and bring the lagging up to be consistent with um, the, uh, the, the wall beyond it. And there's a detail on the second sheet or I can get into that if we want to. This is then, you know, looking back the other way towards windward, you can see we have the stairway here up to the deck above, which is basically in disrepair and probably unsafe. Um, all of that will be removed. We will be replacing the deck up on the upper level, but it's going to be supported with triangular braces off the side of the building so that all of these columns and structures that supports that extend down will be removed and the staircase will be removed so it'll be you know clear to the sky above with the exception of the of the the balcony itself and, and the supports mounted to the building. And this is then looking back into the corner, you know, where we have, this is the higher edge here, and then it drops down. And so this will be brought up and, and up to a suitable grade elevation and backfilled up to um, um, match the floor of the building. Okay. Can you go back two pictures just for a minute? This one? The next one. Yeah. Is there an old bulkhead in there? That yep. Okay. Yep. So this this looks like this is an old bulkhead here, and then it yeah. I mean, there's there's just all kinds of. I think that that all you know the bulkhead was repaired at one point in time by constructing directly in front of what's there. I don't I don't know the full history of it, but you know, looking at it, it certainly appears that you know this here. Or these are you know um, steel piles with the timber lagging in between that. Um, you know, were abandoned in favor of the more seaward version. And that, you know, I don't have the exact heights on it, but it certainly looks like this this one at one point in time was higher than the new one, which would be, you know, more consistent with what we're proposing to do by raising it up. Okay. So will you be installing um, 
new H piles, the, the steel piles? No, I, I would I would envision that what we would do is just uh, weld on and, and support as necessary extensions okay. to the existing okay. ones. Yeah. I mean, we're only coming up. I mean, I, I can bring the detail. We're not only coming up like 18 inches or something like that. Okay. There'd be no reason to replace the, the piles. How about the flowable fill? Um, can you explain that operation? Um, it, it, I'm not. I'm not sure I can because we're getting into a little bit of means and methods here. But the flowable fill to to place it in here would is what we'd like to do, just because it would you know minimize the potential for the erosion that's happened here. I think that what's happened is is because of this you know materials that are being granular in nature that they've kind of work their way out through gaps in the timbers and out into the river over a period of time. Because um, I'm under the impression that there was some voids that carried back towards the building. And uh, I didn't know if the flowable fill had was for that or just what's shown in this picture. Well, I think it's all of the above. OK, so uh, where where's the mechanism to go on the other side of the bulkhead? Is there gonna be excavation to track these down or what? Um, well, I think what we'd come in and we would remove, um, you know, the, the, the debris. Um, I have a, a section in here that would, you know, here, so this is a general depiction of the broken concrete slab and the basing and things like that. You know, we would be looking to, I think, it would probably make sense to take out some of the, the loose pieces of, of debris like the slab and then you know put the flowable fill in on top of it. Okay. Will this the be building is only is actually only been there, the majority of the building only since 79. Uh, uh, since I, when? 79. Uh, I was with Port Engineering when uh, okay. it was done. Is there any connection between this bulkhead and, and the work that's going to be done on the bulkhead in the um, closer to Tuscan Grill? Will it uh, no, I think this is sort of it's this is just limited to the section across the front of the building. Wrong slide. Whoops, still wrong slide. Here we go. You know, we're just looking to do this section here. I see. And the you had mentioned a public uh, walkway to allow the public to get out there. Um, is there going to be signage and so forth on that? Um, there could be. Well, I mean, was that something you decided yourself, or is that something the state was requiring? Um, we've basically intended to build it that way. So decided it ourselves that we haven't, you know, there are no, um, we haven't have any provisions for signing, but that signage, it doesn't mean we couldn't, couldn't do so. Yeah. Um, I, uh, there's a difference the way I look at it. One would be, you know, uh, you don't have to do this and the other would be that you would and you'd have signage. So I, I'm not, yeah. I'm not pressing anything here. It would be nice, but, uh, if if it's not required, I'm not I'm not asking you to. I, I think it would be a good know. idea to have signage. Otherwise, you know, if I were just walking by, I I wouldn't know I could go out there. Okay. Paul, I I didn't notice on the detail plan. Um, will there be a a railing? Yes, there's a railing. So, um, so basically, I, just to wrap it up, item five is just raising this to grade with the with the the pavers, okay? And it, it's that's I have just as a separate item. But yes, we're proposing to to add in, you know, wood railing with cable balusters. I mean, you'd need it because you know that that what you have here is that the 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 top of the the, the pavers is at, at you know 99.23 and so um you know you're only six inches i mean this is just like a kickboard here at the top of the bulkhead at that elevation so you'd have to have the 
railing there so that nobody falls in. And that's consistent with what's already existing, uh, you know, down by windward and the travel lift and all of that. Okay, I think you can see, uh, yeah, like so in this in this one here that you know this is looking back that there's we'd be looking at different you know more robust fence than this, but it's the same idea. You've got the railing there that would extend up, you know, to the appropriate height above um, above the finished surface. And did you have a chance to evaluate the, the condition of the existing bulkhead on to which you plan to add extensions? Is that, does that appear to be in pretty decent shape? It appears to be in pretty decent shape. You know, I don't, I haven't, you know, done an assessment of it and that's not my thing. So I wouldn't be, you know, qualified to do it anyway. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think we probably would look at, you know, some of the structural details on exactly how you do the extension and you know that probably warrants a bit of an evaluation mm -hmm. but we're not we're not raising it much but i mean i you know visually it looks like all those the steel piles are in good shape the timber landings in good shape it's just everything behind it that's a disaster um just to get back to the public access that wraps around the building, would that walk through the outdoor eating area? Yes, it would. As, so that, as currently proposed, it would. So um, that would be a little awkward. Um, well, potentially, yes. So, I mean, to that end, you know, I don't, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't circumvent that with an opening on this end here um you know to address that okay yeah if you're gonna do it you may as well not mess with the uh, restaurant or right mess with the rules you can with it right and and quite frankly you know we've we talked about it internally that we have an opportunity to do a similar situation here so you know, right now the access is to go up like you're walking into the into the restaurant, either by the steps or by the ramp, as opposed to, and I think that it would be feasible to make a connection here, which is sort of a landing seating area adjacent to the gazebo and the security gate down to the, the marine floats. Okay. Yeah, it's it seems like there might be like sort of a fuzzy line between what's part of the restaurant and what's, um, you know, a public access area. I wasn't under, I wasn't sort of thinking of it when you said public access through there, I was thinking it was like public access for patrons of the restaurant. But if it's really public access, that could get tricky because I could see also people at the restaurant having a drink and wanting to stand out there as part of their restaurant experience. But then is it like a public way? I don't, seems a little funny. Yeah. All right, well, we, we've we given you something to, uh, to consider too. Um, uh, how about, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. How, how any provisions here as far as uh, preventing any kind of turbidity or any, uh, during the time this work is going on, I mean, uh, you're going to be backfilling, you're going to be pulling things out of there, uh, you're going to have the flowable fill. Um, is there anything proposed? Uh, at the moment, there is not, with the understanding that all of this is behind the existing bulkhead, but um, that certainly can be added. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going so far as to say put in um, uh, floats and so forth, because uh, you know, like uh, trash floats and things, but at least some type of uh, monitoring of the top of it, just to make sure that people aren't uh, throwing scraps over the side or they're not, uh, nobody's uh, putting material into the water. Yeah. One of those nets, I mean, is that what you sort of you're thinking of, David? Yeah, I something along with the, I'm, I'm thinking it would be probably be sufficient from the top, but yeah. um, what, because, um, you know, just, just to 
make sure there's a, a barrier and the, the workers and everybody else uh, avoids uh, sending stuff over the side. Okay. Um, is uh, anybody interested in the site visit of this spot? I had a couple other questions. Well, you can do that. You can ask those too. Okay. Um, Paul, I, I don't see any uh, utilities that are going into the building. Um, uh, yet there was utilities was uh, that uh, I don't see on these plans. Um, that is a good question. I don't know if utility services were upgraded as part of the renovations or not, or if they were underground or overhead. I don't know the answer to that. Well, they were underground. They went through okay. the parking lot because I saw John Hart out uh, there doing it. Okay. And uh, I mean, at the time, I, I didn't report it or, or anything, but I, I'd like to at least see it after the okay. fact and have the fact that you show where these utilities are. Okay. Um, also, I had a couple other things. This is now a riverfront area, which wasn't shown in the uh, order of, or the uh, Notice of intent that wasn't shown. And also, I didn't see any proof of the endangered species uh, uh, national the heritage uh, letter. Okay. I think I've got that. Um, I'm, uh, if not, I will follow up on it. Okay. So, um, and, and Riverfront. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, okay, so Paul, do you think you've got the Natural Heritage Letter? You just don't have it with you? I don't remember if I have um, it. I do not remember seeing it back. I would have to check my email. Um, yeah. I would probably prefer not to do that now. I mean, I think we've got some follow up here to do anyway. So I can, okay. if I have it, I can go chase it down. Okay. Okay. Yep. But it was sent in. Yeah. I was just thinking that yeah. the other items were things that you could add to the plans, sort of. Um, yep prior to issuance of an order of conditions, that kind of thing, then, you know, it could possibly, the commission could close the hearing tonight um, with those outstanding things just being sent in after. But then again, if the commission wants to take a look at the utility lines and if they wanna look, um, we need to make sure the natural heritage maybe has to be continued. It's just that the next meeting is until August. 1st, I think. Is it the first? I thought it was the seventh. No, because the first of Tuesday. Uh, well, first Tuesday, yes, yeah, is, is the, the first. The first? Yeah. Got it wrong. Okay, good. Then that's only two weeks. Yeah, I don't think I have anything from the endangered species. Okay. I, right. I don't think I have anything back from them. So I need to I need to track that down. Yep. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Yep. I don't know what you're going to see as far as the utilities, short of what you provide us. I mean, it's already covered up. You'll just see the paving that was done to repair it. But I'd like to uh, at least have that noted. Yeah, no, I, I agree. We can get that. I don't know where they are. Um, so I will we'll get that figured out and, and add it to the plans. And, and I guess um, it would be nice if, uh, it, 
well, I guess we could write it into the special conditions as if, if in fact anything is encountered with the bulkhead, um, you know, that we should be notified if there's additional repairs or things of that sort. Yep, understood. The, the, um, the rooftop that you mentioned earlier, is that just an, a part of the building or will that be part of the restaurant? Oh, the deck up yeah. above? Yeah, yeah that's, um, I, I think what we still have is, this, uh, Chris, can you, and, I mean, that what upstairs, that's not part of the restaurant, that's um, a continuing marina office up there, is that correct? Um, Um, as of right now, that that um, deck, the second floor is kind of on hold for um, ADA access. So that that's ultimately that deck would be uh, restaurant use, but the ADA access from the first floor to the second floor has to be um, finalized before we can go through the building department on the second floor. So there's no work being done currently on the second floor. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, does it, is anybody interested in a site visit for this place? Um, I don't have time. I mean, I can walk down there myself. It's pretty pretty open, but okay. Well, I'm I'm not hearing a lot of enthusiasm. So, uh, so well, we'll... I'm just wondering what they would be able to show us in a site visit. That is there something uh, in particular? For me, it would be getting a look at the bulkhead and seeing what what it looks like from there, and getting a sense of uh, what sort of room there is for, for all the walkways and everything. But if uh, if it ain't moving you, it ain't moving you. So I'm fine with it. Yo, I'm feeling it, but I, I'm not sure that I, uh, that I would see anything down there that isn't, the, the photographs are actually really very good. So I feel like okay. they captured the, 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 uh, the site pretty well. Okay. If you walk in there, you need to do so very carefully. So choose where you step wisely and, you know, it's, but you can look at it from, uh, you know, by the marina floats too. So whatever you'd like to do is fine. Okay. Climb up those stairs, Joe, and, and access it from that upper deck. Yeah, go. I'm going to step really hard as I go up them too. Yeah, Dan was going to volunteer to go first. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so okay. Uh, what are, what are we doing here? Are we continuing? Are we closing the hearing? You need to ask the public first. Well, ask the public first then. <laughs> um, any any comments from the public? Questions, comments? Raise your digital hand, please. Still see no digital hands. Okay. So, what do we want? I'm of the opinion we should continue it. But... I kind of am too. I would like to see the the updated plans and uh, and whatever issues listed tonight get uh, get addressed. Um, so, personally, I'd rather. Have this continued till August first. If uh, if you guys think you can get that information to us by then, yeah, I can get you the information by then. Well, I'm assuming that I got to figure out what happened with endangered species and that they can be responsive. But I'll I'll track that one down. But yes, that's that's a reasonable time frame. I think for what we're looking at here. Okay. Okay. All right. I get a motion to continue to August 1st. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. 
And I vote yes. All right. Thank you. See All you right. next time. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I got a motion to close the public hearings. So moved. Second. Roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the only order of conditions we have is Kim Turner City, Newburyport, 149 High Street. Okay, so um, I prepared a draft um, special conditions. These are the draft special conditions for an order of conditions, um, starting in with number 19 after the standard ones on the order of conditions form from the Wetlands Protection Act. We These are our boilerplate ones. And then we get down really, can, to- Can you put yeah. that up on the screen? Yeah, we're oh, you not- you can't see this? I'm sorry. Oh. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I thought it was up there. Um, so these are the general. These are our special conditions. Our our boilerplate general conditions. We've got a bunch: pre-construction, during construction, and then we have these special conditions. Are the ones that we put in um, additionally based on comments and special requests during hearing. Um, I went ahead and put in a couple already which would be prior, and I think we've talked about these over the course of the first few hearings. Um, prior to the start of work, bedrock groundwater well testing data shall be provided to the commission along with final details of any well water treatment systems that will be required for use of the well water within the pond. And prior to the start of work on site, a construction staging sequencing plan, including location and details of the dewatering system, discharge points, et cetera, shall be provided to the commission for review and approval. And then those were the only two that really I felt like were kind of confirmed through the course of our public hearings. Um, if there are any others that you all want to add, we can add them now. Do we want to have one for uh, the plants surviving two years? Yep, that's a good idea. So let's add another right here. Six. Julia, you've got two forty fives in there. I know I have to, this is because we have to do it differently now because of our new online permitting system. All the templates have got reshuffled. So I have to like actually manually and put all the numbers and change them. So now this will be, I, I'll fix all these numbers later. So that'll be okay. 46, it'll be 47. Um, but let's just call this um, all um, site plantings. Um, shall be solved um, immediately after construction. Well, let's say all site plantings installed as part of the project. Will be monitored for two years or something like that. Yeah. Measure at least seventy five percent survival. Anything else? That looks good. Is there something in there about the um the the Wildlife <laughs> that they're, uh, you know, they mentioned something about the, one of the pictures had something about where they were going to be, which I, I didn't, frankly, I didn't follow. But I know we talked about that before. It wasn't clear if they were going to, what they were going to do about the, what, what the animals that are currently there moving them. My understanding was that, that they consistently um, told us that they would not be responsible for. Yeah, that's what I thought. So is that wow. we do? Do we just leave it that way then? Um, I thought they said something uh, was referencing uh, 
some agency or something that you you couldn't move them or something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, Maybe. they'd have to, they'd have to take custody of them or something. And um, do you have room at your house, don't you, Joe? Yeah, I got plenty of wetlands. I can uh, <laughs> take the turtles. Yeah, they'll live there. I, I think part of the hope was that they would be done with all this construction before things started to look to, to hibernate or estivate or whatever it was, and things would be okay. I, I guess we'll see. And they seem to also, I think, imply that they lost the ones that are there, new ones will come. <laughs> yeah, it was. Right, I think that was sacrificial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just didn't know if we wanted to say anything about it, but maybe we can't. Well, they're they're also going to be drawing down the water and giving them an opportunity to uh, escape. As uh, we could say something like, um, "All efforts shall be made to um, avoid direct harm to um, existing wildlife on site during construction." You know, so that at least they have to try, you know, move out of the way if the turtles are trying to escape or something. No, that, that's yeah. fine. have to have a turtle crossing sign on high street mm -hmm. yeah there should be a fox crossing sign too one right in front of me and on high street today really during mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. during the day yep oh you look pretty healthy <laughs> moved across move pretty quick waited for an opening and move pretty quick We have anything, any other? Mm. It's pretty much covered what I was thinking. Okay. Motion to issue the order of conditions. Second. All right, roll call. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. And there we have it. A new male pond. All right. Hey, that's great. Thank you. What? That's pretty much it. Unless somebody has some new business they would like to discuss. I have just one question. I think at the last meeting we talked about, or I talked about finding out who was, who in the city was responsible for the old, the, the landfill. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess the solar people have backed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did talk with Andy about that after our last meeting and um, he said, it's a good question. We need to take a look at that. He was gonna bring it up. We, we are trying to schedule a meeting with the mayor um, to because it involves the you know the lawyers and any other issues that may be coming up around the landfill as well. So he wanted to have us discuss that um, at one of his meetings with the mayor. We just haven't done it yet, but I will remind him. Um, and if you have any photos, Steve, I'll go out there and try and take some pictures of the site, if you noticed, you said there's trees and stuff. I haven't been out there in a while. So if you have anything you can send me that sort of, you know. I don't have any pictures, but I can certainly go down there. I can too. Take some. Okay. No, don't, no worries. I was, it's on my agenda to do that. And okay. um, I did talk with Andy about it. So okay. I'm gonna come but, up with it. There's also that vernal pool that's right next to the recycling center that in theory, they're supposed to be maintaining and keeping free of Phragmites. Yeah. And um, that hasn't been done for, for years, so. Yeah, I mean, in theory, they're supposed to have done a lot of things. I, I would say that that's probably 
as much as we would would love that to be on their list. Um, yeah, I, I recognize that the chances of them doing it are slim to none, but right. <laughs> right. We, I mean, we've we've we can we can try again. Yeah, we can keep trying, keep trying again. Um, we will put together a list of things. Yeah, openings. But it would be nice to know who in the city is owns it. <laughs> right, right. right owns now, what the uh, vernal pool? No, uh, it just owns you know. Responsibility. Oh, landfill. The, you know, responsibility for the, the landfill. And, you know, maybe it'll it's, fall it's, on us. I don't know. It's Tebow's property. It's not yeah, our it's property. Not, it's not our property. No, so. no, but making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. I, oh, well. Yeah, that's uh, that's squarely actually in the mayor's office. It always has been um, because it involves so many different issues and it's, it's extensively involved with our, le like our legal counsel. Um, and negotiations with Tebow over a variety of different things. So, and that was, even though we have new legal counsel now, because I, I, I believe that because that was always with Copeland and Page, that it stays with Copeland and Page um, in terms of who, who's handling that for us, which is good because there's so much history there. It would be hard for someone else to pick up, pick it up new. But um, at the same time, it's not like the old process we got us anywhere. Yeah, keep trying, I will, um, Steve. What? Keep trying, Steve. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. It's I, I'll check back with Andy and see when we can get that on the mayor's agenda. I, I have a question on the um oldies, that project that uh got as far as a discussion about who owned the property and then it was dropped. Yeah. yeah. Um, has that been resolved as far as the ownership? Uh, yeah, apparently it has. Um, from what I've heard in the planning office, they did, did they do have documentation showing that it is owned by New England Development, um, but at the same time, they don't. They're not moving forward with that project okay, right now. So, yeah. yeah. The reason I asked is if it was city land or something, you know, reverted to the city or so forth, the fence there is, it wouldn't mm. necessarily be uh, on New England Development's property. And uh, I, I didn't know if that was something that, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things to take care of that they're, they're important, in, but I mean, if, if it would be nice to, to to at least have the fence in the right place yeah. and, and if the city had more property they could use on the rail trail it would be nice too yeah yeah that's a good point I, it, it might come back again i know they had a, a plan that they wanted to move forward with last year and they've just sort of put it on pause for now so it still could come back to us and we'll be able to take another look at it yeah. um but yeah i think they do a well lot. wait <laughs> All right, you got anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yep. Dan Warshaw. Yes, please. <laughs> and I vote yes. And I saw that yawn, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, right. can, you, you can go get rest now. Thanks. Uh, that was good. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.